I recently released a video about a Synology Network Attached Storage, or a NAS, and why I prefer to use this system in my workflow to store all of my creative files. One of the reasons is that this system comes with redundancy built in. That means that one or more drive could fail, and depending on how I set that up, I technically can still access the file and be safe without having to worry about my files being gone or anything like that. However, with the redundancy built in here, that is still not a foolproof or a robust solution for backing up your files. So I have some solution here that I have used and deployed throughout the years. This is something that I use in my own studio and also ones that I suggest to other people to use as well. And I'd like to share that with you. Let's find out together how I back up my Synology system. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. It is always a great idea to have a separate copy of your file backup to external drive very similar to the ones I have here. This is especially true if you're running on a NAS array that has redundancy built in. Just because these redundancy, depending on the RAID type that you choose when you build up your array, does not guarantee that your data is always going to be safe. For instance, while you're rebuilding the array and replacing that damaged drive or whatever that may be, if another drive should fail, during that process, your data is now in jeopardy. So having a set of external drive like the one that I have here is going to be a much cheaper solution than losing a data in your NAS array and having to send everything in here to a data recovery company for them to recover your data. It can be done, however, you're spending a lot of time you have to send the drive in, that takes time. They will have to take time themselves to recover all the data for you and piece everything back together that also takes time and is extremely costly. And thirdly, once you get the files back, they're not necessarily gonna be organized in the way how you have them before. They're gonna be in generic file names and if you have a Lightroom catalog, for instance, forget about trying to get that Lightroom catalog back in one piece. Sometimes they are able to do that, sometimes they're not able to do that, so you're taking a big risk when you don't back up your data. Having the external backup set it's going to be a much cheaper solution in the long run. In the last video where I talk about Synology, I talk about the drive that I've used to run the backup on my system. And the one that I've been using a lot are these Seagate backup hub drive. They have two USB port in the front and these are great drive to use because on an eight terabyte one, you can find them on sale, at least in the US anyway, for around $120. Costco have these on sale all the time. So if you can wait, I would just wait for a Costco sale or an Amazon sale or BH photo sale and then just get massive amount of these to run backup on your system because eight terabyte is a good amount to back up the data. Now, if you want to go with a larger capacity, for example, a 10 or a 12 terabyte one, these are starting to come up in larger capacity as well. However, the price on the market is still fairly high. Well, one thing that I do recommend that you get is to find two of them and get a redundancy set so that one of them can be an on-site backup and the other one can be an off-site backup. You can rotate the on-site and off-site one, I would probably say every two weeks, every month, depending on how you feel comfortable. But I think it's always a great idea to have an off-site backup, including an on-site backup as well. This way, for instance, if you just back up your NAS array and tomorrow, let's say something fail, you have an on-site live data right away that you can plug this in, use, and not having to worry about the downtime or trying to restore this NAS array should the number of drive failure exceed the maximum tolerance. Now, this being said, the off-site backup also helps as well. For instance, let's say some catastrophic event happened at your main site, like fire, for instance, or flood, whatever that may be, you have a safeguard or your data offsite, and this is generally going to help out a lot. So again, the Seagate Backup Plus Hub, these are the ones that I recommend that you get because they're priced reasonably. Now, Seagate Backup Plus Hub also comes in a Mac version, and this is the white one as well. Sometimes these versions are on sale. Most of the time, these are priced at a premium compared to these black ones that you see here, and they're pretty much identical drive on the inside. So pretty much for the most part, I will recommend just getting these regular ones and they will function just fine. A few other things to note about these drives is that they are not fast drive by any means. They're really designed for long-term storage, for backup. They're not really designed for everyday use where you're constantly accessing your file, rewriting your files, but they're really much more so designed so that you can just throw your files on there, not having to pull it up for a long time and add more files down the road. And they're really amazing backup drive for that reason. But again, don't use it in your daily workflow. 
The other drive that I've seen a lot of is this Seagate right here, and this is the expansion desktop drive. I don't recommend getting these type of Seagate drive because price point wise compared to the Backup Plus, they are about the same. They are the same drive on the inside, so they are fairly slow drive. The differences between these two is that the expansion only comes up with one year warranty while the Backup Plus comes with two year warranty. This is if you're in the United States. So these are just things to think about. Now you may actually ask that, well, if you have a very large array like the one that I have here, this is around 60 terabytes of raw data that I can store on here. These are only eight terabytes. That means I'm going to have multiple of these drive. Absolutely. But as you're starting out, you're not going to need multiple of these drive right away. You can always aggregate them and add more to your collection later on. If you're on a Macintosh system, I recommend using a program that can automate all of these synchronization and backup process. The one that I use a lot is a program called Carbon Copy Cloner. And with Carbon Copy Cloner, you can segment the files that you want to back up to for example, this specific drive, and you can have another file segment that you back up this drive by creating different tasks, and you can simply just back up your entire NAS array that way. If you're on a PC side, a program called GoodSync is one that I have seen really good result from, and that is something that you can use as well to back up your files, and again, segment your files so you can back up certain segments to drive A, another segment to drive B, so on and so forth. This is going to be the best solution that you have. And this is a solution that I recommend to all of my clients that I consult with, including ones that I've used myself. These are all my drive right now. And learn from my experience, get the backup plus, you do not need a Mac one and do not get the expansion because there is less warranty. Now, this being said, I have been using these drive for at least, I would say three to four years now, and none of them have gone through any failure. I even have the old backup plus version that doesn't even have the USB hub on here. And those drive, I used to store my work back from, I would say 2012, 2013, and they're still functioning just fine. But those are the solutions that I use for backup and I always have at least two set of backup on these drive and one on site, one off site. This way I'm guaranteed if something ever happens to my NAS or the data on here, I'm safeguard and I can continue to work right away with minimal downtime. So I hope this information was helpful to all of you in backing up your data and encourage you to just really take a safe practice and safe approach to backing up your data. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art Retrust.